God bless you for joining our service. Good morning, and um, it's a wonderful day in the house of God as always. We are continuing or concluding our series on Esther. I pray that you have been blessed this month of May as we looked at Esther, Esther's wit, Esther's mouth, etc. Today we are concluding with the title, For Such a Time as This. And I put a big emphasis on this. The time is this one, not any other time. For such a time as this. And uh, the text is taken from Esther chapter 4, verses 9 through 14. And I kindly ask those in the house to stand so we read God's word together. Esther 4, 9 to 14. And we'll read it at the count of three. One, two, three. Hathak went back and reported to Esther what Mordecai had said. Let's read out. Then she instructed him to say to Mordecai, All the king's officials and the people of the royal provinces know that for any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner court without being summoned, The king has but one law, that they be put to death unless the king extends the gold scepter to them and spares their lives. But 30 days have passed since I was called to go to the king. When Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows, but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Let me read the last verse, verse 14 again. Just just pay attention to every word. It says that, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place but you and your family or you and your father's family will perish it's almost like a prophecy and who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this I want to read this to you and who knows but that you have come to your royal place for such a time as this. One more time. But who knows, and who knows that you have come to your royal place for such a time as this. Father, we thank you that there is something called a royal place Thank you that you operate in times and seasons. Thank you that you schedule times and seasons for your children, for those you love, for those you have a covenant with. As we delve into your word, I pray that you'll open our eyes to behold the times and seasons that are before us. We commit the word and the preaching of it into your hands, O oh God. I ask you for clarity of thought and clarity of speech to communicate your will to the hearers of this word. Anoint me and let this word be a rima word to every hearer. We thank you for those here in person and those worshiping with us remotely. Let the words of my mouth be a blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And God's people said amen. 
You may take your seats. For such a time as this, Esther chapter 4, 9 to 14. And I said earlier that the emphasis is on this time. The Bible says that this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. God has not made tomorrow. <laughs> so don't defer your enjoyment till tomorrow. Don't defer maximizing your opportunities till another day. Oftentimes that's how we live. We say when this falls into place and when I get this and when I get that, then I will begin to enjoy what God has created. That's a lie of the devil. Mordecai has said to his relation, Esther, who knows that you have come into your royal place for such a time as this one. Just in case Esther was deferring her glory, just in case Esther was deferring an appointment with destiny, he said, no, there is no tomorrow. Esther, this is it. And this morning, God wants to tell you that this is it. This is the time. That thing you have been dreaming of, that life you have been dreaming of, it's all packaged in today. So let your attitude about today be very different. Live today to the max. Because there is grace for today. There is no grace for tomorrow. Tomorrow there will be no grace. The Bible says that his messages are renewed every day. So until 11.59 Sunday, May 29, 2022, max up the day. For who knows that you have come into your royal position for such a time as this. In the scripture we read, we hear the words of uh, Hathak. Hathak was one of the king's eunuchs assigned to attend to Esther. And when the disaster was unfolded, when they all learned about the plan of evil Haman, Hathak was the go-between person between Mordecai and Esther. First, Mordecai sent Hathak, go tell Queen Esther, this is the situation, I want you to take these actions, and then Esther sends Hathak back, go tell Mordecai that, you know, I can't go into the king's presence because of this and that and that, because of the law of the land. If I go into the king's presence unsummoned, I can get into trouble. And so Hathak went back and reported to Esther what Mordecai had said. Then she instructed him to say to Mordecai, all the king's officials and all the people of the royal provinces, no, for any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner court without being summoned, the king has but one law, that they be put to death. Danger! <laughs> Esther sees danger. Esther sees danger. Unless the king extends the gold scepter to them and spares their lives. But 30 days have been passed since I was called to go to the king. That's profound. Two people of God, Mordecai and Esther are people of God. They are not unbelievers. They have a covenant with Jehovah. One person who has authority sees one thing. Another person without authority sees a completely different thing. The person with power sees danger, red light. The person without any power sees opportunity. The two members of one family are standing at the intersection of danger and opportunity. Interesting story. They see the same thing differently. That's how life is. Perspective. 
They know what everything is going to lead to. They know the law. Mordecai, who is challenging Esther to go to the king, knows the law. But Mordecai has a different perspective about it. And she's nudging Esther, Queen Esther, she's nudging Esther. Esther, I want you to change your mindset. I want you to change your perspective. Is it that there is no danger? Absolutely not. There is real danger. And as long as you live on planet Earth, my friend, there will be danger on so many levels. But at the same time that there is danger, there will be opportunities. And the two will always intersect. And it's up to you to choose which side. I got to choose you this day whom you will serve. Choose you this day what you will see. Will you see like Queen Esther with power? Or will you see like Mordecai without power? I would see like Mordecai. Because the way Mordecai sees things is revolutionary. It changes destinies. <laughs> there is danger. And Mordecai has the audacity to nudge Queen Esther and says, step into it. It really ain't danger. It's an opportunity. <laughs> None of us, sadly, is exempt from danger. Or dangerous Life situations, situations that endanger us. The nation is coming out of a dangerous period. And we mourn with all those who have lost family members. It is tragic. But I guarantee that at that intersection of danger, there is also opportunity. And I pray for the land that in these moments, we will look the way Mordecai looked. Because if you don't look the way Mordecai looked and see things the way Mordecai saw things, you will be so disillusioned, you will not be able to go till 11.50. You, you, you'll be gone before 11.59. And may that not be your portion. But if you see through the lens of Mordecai, you can hang in there till 11.59 and then God gives you another grace for a new day. And that will take you forward. Danger presents opportunities, and it is necessary that we see opportunities in crisis. Now, whatever happened to you, whatever happened in your past, whatever happened to you, is not more powerful than what can happen. If you're writing notes, write that down. Whatever happened to you before on planet Earth, no matter how evil, how tragic, how terrible it is, it's not more powerful than what can happen. In the context of the scripture, what happened to them was a betrayal. Haman had gone to sell Israel and they were about to kill all of them. Genocide was hanging over their heads. That was in their past. Mordecai saw through the eye of faith what was possible. And he said that I believe that what can happen to us is better than what just happened to us. Perspective. What can happen to you is always better. It's always more powerful than whatever Happen. So trust God and hang in there, my friend. Now, our callings in life are usually embedded in catastrophe. And they catapult us forward. Our callings in life. Esther is really, she's a queen and all of that. But I would argue that Esther became Queen Esther, after she stepped into this challenge and did the needful. The reason we are discussing Esther is because of what she did. It's because she sprang into action in a time of crisis. Your glory will appear when you respond in the midst of the crisis. 
the reason we make heroes out of firefighters and policemen is because they run into danger and they deliver people who are on flames and we say they're heroes. They are not heroes until they go in the danger. So if you are looking for ways to run away from the danger, your glory will never be manifest. Embrace the danger. Look for the opportunity in the danger. God is in the fire. And if you have the courage to trust him and step into that situation, God will reveal his glory over your life. Amen. Amen. And so Esther's words were reported to Mordecai. And he sent back this answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, if you turn another eye, the eye another way, if you look the other way, basically, he says, and it's almost prophetic, he says, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. Who told Mordecai that relief and deliverance was going to come from some other place? How did he get that? He has no connections but Esther. And Esther is hesitant. But somehow inside his spirit mind, he knows that if Esther doesn't do it, my God who is divine will create some way. And he names the way. He says relief and deliverance. The God we serve is the God who gives relief. And he's the God of deliverance. If you have hit a roadblock, Jehovah God is a God of relief. And he's a God of deliverance. And Mordecai knew that. Relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. Something is going on in the mind of Mordecai, which I wanted to pay attention to. Mordecai has envisioned relief and deliverance. And she says, if it doesn't come from here, it's going to come from there. And if it doesn't come from there, it will come from some other place. But he knows that relief. And deliverance. May God bring you relief and deliverance. If you are expecting relief and deliverance from this place and it failed, may God bring it from another place. After all, he's a self-existing God. He's at all, he's a provider. He's Jehovah Jireh. He can do all things by himself. <laughs> he says relief and deliverance will come from another place. Mordecai points to a possible opportunity in the midst of a crisis. And he's not even limited by Esther's actions or inaction. Don't put your trust in man. God uses people. But people are just people. So if this door shuts, trust God. If that one shuts, trust God. Always put your trust in God. Because you might be disappointed by Johnny. But God has prepared somebody else. So don't you let Johnny's disappointment be a final blow to you. Otherwise you are short-sighted. It takes knowing God to be able to see any opportunity in the midst of a crisis. And I want you to stretch your faith. I want you to stretch your faith. Put your faith in a God who is without limit. A God who doesn't run out of options. And stretch your faith to this God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13 that no temptation has over, overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. It is the devil who lies to us and tells us it is over. It's not over. It's just beginning. Mordecai has power to believe that God will make a way in this dire situation. 
And he has the audacity and the guts to follow his conviction. I pray that you will have courage to dare to trust God till the very end. So how did Mordecai, how did he, how did he do that? How did he believe? How did he get to that point of knowing that relief and deliverance? One word, imagination. Can you say the word imagination? imagination. Say the word imagination. imagination. Mordecai used something that we don't often use or maximize. Mordecai was able to close his eyes and envision a better scenario out of the mess. And I pray that God will give us that grace to be able to close our eyes and see through the darkness and see light. Amen. Because if you can't do that, you're going to be stuck. If you can't do that, you're going to be stuck. Because as I said earlier, life happens to all of us. The righteous and the unrighteous. But like Mordecai, it is necessary to be able to see through the trial and through the disaster and through the affliction onto the other side because there is another side. Imagination transcends our present realities. Imagination transcends our present realities. It will carry you from your present reality to your preferred and desired reality. I'll say it again. Imagination transcends. It, it cuts through our present reality. It cuts through like that. It will carry you from your present reality, which is point A, to your preferred or desired reality. What Mordecai was speaking, what he was prophesying is his desired reality. In his heart, he was desiring relief and, and deliverance that nobody had promised him, but that was the desire. And he had envisioned a situation where God will suddenly make a way and it was, it was beginning to eat him up and it, it was just beginning to come out of him. The Bible says that out of the, out of the abundance of the, of the heart, the mouth speaks. That was what was bubbling in his spirit. He said, I see deliverance and I see breakthrough and I see opportunity and I see relief. But I don't know how it's going to happen. But I still see it. You don't need to know how it's going to happen, but you must be able to see it. And the power of the imagination ate him up so badly that he transferred it to Queen Esther and infected Queen Esther with that power of imagination so much that Esther called for a fast for three days. And Esther said, because of that disease he just passed on to me, I'm going to go see the king. And if I perish, I perish. Esther has shifted. Esther has shifted. Esther was on the side of the aisle. She was the one who was a little hesitant. But now suddenly she's talking about if I perish, I, what happened? The power of imagination had just transferred to her. And now she too is beginning to imagine a possibility. Even if it's 0.01%, it's still a possibility. So I'll go and explore it. The worst is that I get killed, but at least I went. So imagination was working. God, our Heavenly Father, is a God of imagination. He's a God of vision. And we created in His image must always live out such a life, a life of active imagination. Because if you cannot conceive what God will do, you won't have it. If you cannot, if you cannot imagine that God can do this, you are not even going to venture close to that. The opportunity might be right under your nose. But in your mindset, you just can't even believe that God can do it. So you will not even gravitate toward the opportunity. And it will go to the next person. 
In the beginning, Genesis, we are introduced to God. We are introduced to God who is creator, creative God. Uh, the Bible says that before God ever started creating, the earth was without form and void. A nice way of saying that the earth was a mess. But God, who is a God of imagination, who produced people with imagination, God looked at the earth, and I imagine God just closing his eyes and envisioning all kinds of things. And that filled with vegetation, and that filled with lands and waters, and, and the skies and the stars, and people. And it all came from his imagination. And after he conceived it in his imagination, he began to speak it out. And he said, let there be light. And there was light. Because before God spoke the light, he saw the light. He imagined the light. He, he touched the light. Before he spoke the rivers into being and the elephants and the rhinos and human beings, he envisioned all of it. Before he created Adam, he imagined Adam. Mordecai is behaving just like his creator. And now creator wants us to behave like him. Especially in the midst of crisis. Genesis 1 is a crisis. The earth was formless and void. Also known as mess. You got some mess? Take on the mind of your heavenly father. Begin to imagine what is possible with your God. And begin to call it out. Mordecai imagined and he began to name it relief. And he began to name it deliverance. He began to name it help. He began to name it salvation. Will you imagine it and name it? The earth was void and formless. And so God created the things that we see. By things that we do not see. Hebrews 11.13 For by faith we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. That what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. Amazing. God imagined and with his words with his imagination things that are not seen he commanded into being things that are seen the things that you need to see will be created by what you don't see so please see well please see right Please see possibility. Please see opportunity. Please see the power of God. Mordecai, all he had was imagination. He says, I see something. It's called relief. And I see something. It's called deliverance. And I don't know how it's going to happen, but I see it. And I'm beginning to name those things. And as I name those things, I'm beginning to act in accordance with those things I'm naming. And he's waking everybody up. Do you see what I see? Yeah. Esther says, I don't see. He says, no, 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 you got to see what I see. Until Esther begins to see what Mordecai sees through the eye of faith. Yes. Beware what you imagine. Beware what you see. Because the things you imagine, the things you see, the things you say, which are un which are not tangible, do end up creating the things that must be. That's why the Bible says that life and death lie in the power of the tongue. Last week we said create life for yourself. Create life for the work of God. Create life for your children. Create life for your marriage. Create life for your relationship. Create life. Have nothing to do with death. With an irresponsible use of the mother. Last week we looked at Esther who was guarding her mouth because she knew what lay in her mouth. Imagination, I wanted to look at it as a medium 
of transportation. You want to go from point A to point B. Board the vehicle called imagination. Buy a ticket. Sit in imagination. And be consistent. It will take you there. Imagination. Imagination will transport you from disappointment to appointment. It will take you from sorrow to joy, from failure to success, from luck to plenty, from poverty to wealth, and the list goes on. Walt Disney Company has a department, they call it Walt Disney Imagineering. They usually refer to them as Imagineers. People in that department are called Imagineers. It's Walt Disney Imagineering Research and Development Inc. Founded in 1952. And it's basically the research and development arm of the Disney company. And they are responsible for creating, designing, and constructing the theme parks and attractions worldwide. It's headquartered in Glendale, California. All they do is imagine the kind of excitement and the thrill that people want to have and then they create it for them. Just before Expedition Everest was open in 2006, I had the opportunity of working closely with one such Imagineer. And he's, he's, he's exactly what his title is, Imagineer. He was as unconventional as you can get. His imagination, his thinking, even the way he dressed. <laughs> you couldn't put him in a box. I said it's not surprising that you are an imagineer. And they together imagined something and just created it. That's the power of imagination. That is what Mordecai was dealing with in this circumstance. A circumstance of crisis. Do you have some crisis? God has a tool that he has given to you. You just have not used it. You are crying to God and, and God is saying, I already gave you the answer. God, God is saying, look inside of you. You have it. Can you envision it? If you can, I already gave it to you. I like the partnership between Mordecai and Esther. And it's proof that no person can go alone and win. Esther was on the different side of the spectrum. And Mordecai was on a completely different side. But it would take somebody to point the queen to go and be the queen. It would take another person to identify the power in Esther. And say, Esther, you got power. Rise up to your power. I guarantee you without Mordecai, it would have been a mess. It would have been a disaster. God has placed us in families on the earth. Church family, nucleus family. And God is always using people to point us to glory. Oftentimes due to familiarity, we don't hear the voice calling. And we despise the voice. I love Esther. Esther was, we spoke about this last week. She was quick to listen. Esther was quick to listen. The, the scripture says that we must be quick to listen and slow to speak. Slow to speak, quick to listen. Esther was quick to listen. Esther was quick to listen. And she received her calling just by listening. Everything that will come to you from people, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, every blessing or every curse will be preceded by some words. Somebody will ask you, have you ever been on a cruise? Your response will determine whether that person will sponsor you on the cruise or not. I can say, ah, cruise, no, no, ah, never, never. Oh, oh wow, cruise, that would be great. And just that response will determine whether I get sponsored or not. I'll say it again. Everything, most of the things that come to us will come in words. 
The blessing that God has for you will come in words. It might be a casual suggestion. It might be a recommendation. It might be a hint. It might be a drop. But you must be quick to listen. Esther is Queen Esther. Esther responded to her call. Esther became Esther because she listened. Mordecai was calling Esther into glory. And Esther has trained her ear to listen. Please listen. God is always speaking through you to people. God is always talking to you. Please listen. Your breakthrough is coming as you listen. Some of the things we do in this church is because we just listen. Somebody just came up with that simple idea. Listen. Oh, you got to be a quick listener and a slow talker. We have two ears, one mouth. And so we must be slow to speak, but very quick to listen. I followed the just ended American Idol. I'm always fascinated when I see people put their gifts to work, push their gifts, their talents. And, and of course, the American Idol is about musical gift. The, the gentleman who won, I think he's 19 years or 20, Noah Thompson, he's a, a carpenter. He knocks wood. And he was on American Idol for about a full year. Session after session after session. A carpenter sung to the top. Do you know that it was a friend who submitted his name? He, he, he saw himself as a carpenter. He said, what, can anything good come out of a carpenter? Yeah. A friend or a colleague said, you, you sing. You're not just good for wood. You sing. And that can get you onto the world stage. And because I see that glory in you, I'm going to nominate you. And then he went ahead and submitted Noah Thompson. And after four years, the carpenter was crowned American Idol. That's going to change his life. That's going to change his life, his career. Launch a career for him he could have never dreamed of. Same thing happening here. Mordecai sees glory. Mordecai sees a woman with power who can make a change for a nation. And Mordecai says, Esther, I'm talking to you. And Esther listened and walked into destiny and changed a situation. And these are the words of Mordecai. And who knows but that you have come to your royal place for such a time as this. Friends, such a time as that does not exist. Such a time as that, it's, it's, not, it's not there. It's, 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 it's a fantasy. Such a time as this. God is always working in the now. You got to be imagination. You got to be imagining things. You got to be listening to God. You got to be hearing from God. And you got to be listening around. What is God doing? What is God saying to me? What is God confirming through people? And you will find your path. God didn't just drop us on this earth helpless, He put resources. In the form of people, in the form of ideas, in the form of people who will advise us and counsel us and guide us. In the form of friends and family. And that's a treasure that will bring us forth. You have come, who knows that you have come to your royal place for such a time as this. Royal place is simply a place of advantage. It's a place of special grace. It's a privileged position that only you have. It's, it's a skill that has been given to you alone. That is your royal place. It, it's something that you can do effortlessly that nobody can. It's something that you can pull off that nobody, sometimes it's your, your connections. That's your royal place. Sometimes it, it, it's your intellect. It's your royal place. And Esther is being prodded. Mordecai is telling that, you know what? Who knows that you have come into your royal place? Who knows why God gifted you with this crown? Who knows why God gave you these talents? 
And Mordecai is trying to get Esther not to be self-centered. Mordecai is trying to get Esther to think nation, to think people, to think about a bigger community because the grace of God over our lives is always for a bigger community. What can I eat? How much can I eat? How much do I need? If everything God is going to give me is for me, I don't want, it has to be bigger because God sees 7 billion people on the earth. And we are just conduits of his grace. Who knows but that you have come to your royal place. I pray that you will go home and do an audit of your royal place. The graces and the gifts and the special talents and the special opportunities God has given you, it comes with a responsibility. It's not just yours. God has lined so many people and they're depending on it. Imagine if Esther didn't do anything. Imagine if Esther was self-centered and selfish. God's people would have likely gone down. Coming into your royal place and failing to use it is a disaster. Sometimes in our royal places, we are complacent. We should never be complacent in our royal places. Re royal places come with responsibility. Bible says that to whom much is given, much is required. If you have been blessed with a royal place, and that's all of us, it comes with a responsibility. The church has a royal place. It comes with a responsibility. Our businesses have a royal places. Our education are royal places. Our connections are royal places. And each one of them comes with a responsibility. And at the end of the day, like the parable of the talents, we will give account to God. God is going to say, what did you do with your royal place? What did you do with your royal place? Sometimes do we abuse our royal places. And may that never be our portion. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. Mordecai, as I begin to conclude, understood times and seasons. Times and seasons are God's thing. God moves in times and seasons. And he could determine that this is a season of opportunity that God has given to us. Life comes in installments of times and seasons. When the season comes, don't miss it. Don't miss it. Mordecai was telling Esther, Esther, this is a season. This is a season of opportunity. If you step in, maybe there's a 0.01% chance. And that season is all we need. That 0 0.01 is all we need. It can make a difference in our destiny. And, and he made the, the whole subject of seasons relevant. God has a time and a season appointed just for you. The Bible says that time and chance happens to all of us. Mordecai understood the big picture. He understood that God works with man. He had read the books and had seen how God created Adam, divinity and humanity. How God called Abraham to birth a nation, divinity and humanity. How God will use Noah, divinity, humanity, Moses, Joseph, Rahab, Nehemiah, Ruth, Mary, Paul, Jesus, divinity and humanity and he understood that for anything to change around here somebody got to raise their hand and say I will he understood that yeah we are in a crisis and there is crisis all around the world but the way to avert the crisis is for some discerning person somebody in tune with heaven somebody who can hear the voice of God through the mouths of people somebody who can identify that this is the season and spring into action and have the courage to run with it. Esther finally was a very composed person and that's one attribute of Esther that struck me. 
she kept her head in the situation. 2 Timothy 4, 5 says that, but keep your head in all situations. God might give you the opportunity, you might have all the right things, but if you are not composed, you can't even think. You can't even think. And she composed herself, formulated a plan, sprang into action, executed it, and she was delivered. Church, who knows but that you have come into a royal place, into your royal place for such a time as this. Our church, Rima Church, is very conscious of coming into a royal place for such a time as this. And we are very intentional about everything we do because we have heard from God and we have seen. How about you? As I conclude, I want to challenge you. If you're not walking with God, I pray that you raise up your hand and say that I want to walk with the God of Esther. I want to walk with the God of Mordecai. I want to walk with your God, Pastor. Call upon the name of the Lord. Ask the Lord to come into your heart. Say, Father, I have departed from you. I submit my heart to you. And I ask your son, Jesus Christ, to come and dwell in me. If that's you, you have received Jesus. Jesus Christ just came into your heart. Write to us. We'll be happy to mail you a Bible at no cost. Find a Bible-believing church and stay in there and grow in faith. If you're ever local in Silver Spring area, worship with us. Otherwise, find us on all the social media platforms, Rima International Bible Church. But walk with God, for you have come into your royal place for such a time as this. I'm Pastor Frederick Newmadison on behalf of God's people here in Rima. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. And God's people said, Amen. Can you receive this word? <laughs>